talking with the, with Ian McKellen, um, you might most recently remember him from the Tony Awards. Do you like to go out on live TV and <laughs> do that kind of stuff? Uh, yes, because on occasion you can say something that you really want to say and they can't stop you. I didn't on that occasion. Was one of the things you Should might I have tell you what I thought I might have said? <laughs> I wondered about saying. Well, I wonder, one of the things you might have wanted to say was, can't anybody in this country learn to pronounce dancing at Lunasa when you uh, know you're going to say it on the air? You yes. might be yes. wise to check the pronunciation yes. and the names of the actresses involved. I oh. think that was meant to be a joke, wasn't it? It's it may have been meant to be. R rather boring joke. I, I thought of, I thought of commenting uh, with my gay activist hat on because uh, Alec Baldwin, one of the p presenters there, had the previous day insulted someone, he thought, by calling him a faggot, and I was going to go out and say... Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You're Alec Baldwin, yes, not to mention right. any names. Yes, that's right. I okay, l let me borrow from the eminent sage Howard Stern's defense of that, which I heard on the radio the other day. Uh, that epithet, when somebody yells an insult to, as I guess uh, one of the carriage drivers had, this is the dispute in New York about should carriages be allowed in Central Park, and it's a big fight back and forth between the drivers and city council and the mayor mm. and the mayor will be. Uh, but one of the drivers, who may have been a bit of a goon, uh, yelled an is insult. Is that a word you can at, use? What does that mean? Uh, oh, I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> yelled an insult at Alec Baldwin, who yelled back, Come step outside, you faggot, and we'll fight. Mm. Um, I, I'm afraid it's a little like Mofa. It doesn't necessarily mean you are literally that, but it's just sort of a uh, no. But what it does mean epithet is, in no, general. No, what, what it does a, a faggot is a homosexual, and a homosexual is not a real man, uh, and, and fights like I, Alec Baldwin, do. Therefore, come out and I'll show that you're a weak wimp, and therefore you're a faggot, and therefore you're effeminate. That's that's the. In other words, you get into the side and inside another man's head and know precisely what he's thinking. Is that <laughs> it, Sir Ian? Uh, well, at I that point, I, th I think <laughs> if someone uses that word in anger, they do betray something about their... Uh, I, I, I think he probably felt bad about it and probably hurried to a gay activist event right away to... Uh, uh, yeah, you I see, the mean. point is, I am a faggot, and I don't mind being called a oh, faggot. Oh, you're not a Nancy boy? Uh, certainly am, yes. Say it isn't so. It, <laughs> can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> not as Nancy as you are, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, now, wait a minute, Buster. Uh, l this is kind of funny, I hope. Um, <laughs> I was watching a Does British show. Does this show go across Middle America? Yeah, Middle America. Because I've got to go and appear in St. Paul and Denver. You know? I know, and they're going to be ready for you, mm, buddy. Uh, You're going to be tar and feathers. Right. Uh, but, but putting all kidding toward one side, as Beatrice Lilly used to say. Uh, <laughs> it's a funny subject. The other night I watched a British film of about the 50s, and uh, a character says, have you heard the rumors that Hopkins is a Nancy boy? And I love that expression. I hadn't heard one of those other good well, one has heard things, I must say I'm surprised. Whatever. I've never but heard that about Tony Hopkins. I really haven't. No, not never. Tony Hopkins. No, Don't Hopkins. make this any worse than you have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now we're into a subject that I had kind of hoped to save for later, but I uh -huh. see. Um, incidentally, this might startle you. The other mm. night, an event at the Waldorf, a lady came up to me and said, May I just say one thing to you? And that usually precedes thank you for Catherine Hepburn so many years ago. Or, she said, thank you for your courage in coming out of the closet. <laughs> and someone next to her looked a little startled and seemed not to have heard of my having come out of the closet. And uh, the closet that I had come out of, I hate to spoil this, uh, uh, was having had depression. And I had talked about it yes. at a convention mm. at Johns mm. Hopkins. And then it got into, mm. I don't know, it, I went on Good Morning America, People Magazine, and mm. so on and so forth. And whenever a celebrity does confess to this ghastly disease, uh, it saves lives, so they, you're, yeah. it's kind of gratifying right. to do it. So I guess I, I, I think of myself as an honorary gay, because I have done a lot of How nice. benefits and so on. Well, I, th I think the, n the nicest men are, you know, the, I, I divide straight men into those who can cope with it and those who can't, and most of uh, my can straight cope friends with it. Well, yeah. don't mind, you know. Now, tell me precisely how you, and you chose the moment to make this public, since you'd obviously thought about it for years. I don't know that I had, and that's the rather surprising thing, that it took me until I was 49 to actually complete the process of coming out, which begins, I suppose, from the day you uh, realize uh, that you're gay and um, start dealing with it. That happened for me when I was about, well, at the age that most people's sexuality is being yeah. stirred, pre-teens. And I didn't really see why I needed to, to tell uh, the media and anybody else who asked because all my friends do. I still don't family. see the need to, but I can see choosing to. Well, the, the, the need to is that if you don't say, then there's, you're not being honest. But your life is acting. Uh, 
Uh, indeed, and that's why I think so many gay men who are in the closet are such good actors mm. professionally. Mm. Uh, no, if they, if they lie about themselves and, and, and don't just aren't capable of talking about themselves and introducing the world to the, the person that they love, uh, that's not very good either for that relationship or for the individual person. And once having done it yourself, you then of course realize the true importance of it uh, for the world at large, which is that just as you coming out as a, uh, someone who's had depression, mm -hmm. I coming out as someone who's gay gives comfort to people who can't come out, because if yeah. they did they would lose their jobs and, uh, and they would lose the respect of their colleagues and their families and sometimes be thrown out on their ear from their house. What I do despise are the people who take it upon themselves to pull others out of the closet. Not really well, that isn't that the point. Things. No, that's yeah. a very unhealthy situation. No, it, yeah. should, it should be something you do yourself. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I have only about a hundred more questions on this subject, and we have a break, and we will be right okay. back with uh, Sir Ian McKellen. I do the wrong and first begin to brawl. The secret mischiefs that I set a brooch, I lay into the grievous charge of others. Clarence, <laughs> whom I indeed have cast in darkness. I do weep to many simple gulls, namely to Stanley Hastings, Buckingham, and tell them tis the Queen and her allies <laughs> that stir the King against the Duke, my brother. Now they believe it, <laughs> and with all wet me to be revenged on Rivers, Dorset, Grey. <laughs> But then I sigh and with a piece of scripture tell them, God bids us do good for evil. And thus I clothe my naked villain in odd old ends stolen forth of holy writ and seem a saint. When most I play the devil. That was Sir Ian McKellen, of course, in Richard III. I wish you were in more films. Yes, so do I. What can we do about that, do you think? Well, why can't you be in as many as you want? I don't know. I think uh, at the time when I might have got into movies, you know, as a, as a guy in my twenties, I was too interested in the theatre when my contemporaries were busy getting into movies, like Atul yeah. and Kane and Hopkins and Jeremy Irons and so on. And by this stage, you know, they, they've got all those people to choose from before they get down to me, but... Well, goose up your agent. You'd, Indeed. You'd have thought as a knight I could start playing rabbis and cabinet ministers and butlers and things. Very <laughs> respectable things, sure. Mm. Uh, l let's get back to the uh, subject, which there was a very, I thought, good piece about you about in the Times. Too many abouts in that sentence. Mm. Um, in, in the New York Times about your uh, coming out, so mm. to speak. Um, and everybody knows that England has had about as backward and stupid an attitude toward homosexuality as any uh, semi supposedly enlightened country over the years. It's true. Uh, and it, it, it took the wit of Oscar Wilde to almost cope with it. Do you remember the great moment he was being abused on the platform? He was in chains going to jail for his predilections and said to the warder, was with them. If this is the way Her Majesty treats her prisoners, she doesn't deserve to have any. <laughs> I just think that's so wonderful, considering the tragedy of his <coughs> case and that yes. he killed him. Of course, for gay activists today, the tragedy is that he never said that he was gay. Um, that word wasn't invented in that context, but he would, right. he, he went to his grave denying that he he was a homosexual. I, I know. So he's not strictly our hero, but uh, that's why he's not a hero, point. isn't it? If he had said, "Okay, here's what I am now, justify your mm. stupid law." But that, that's, then he would have that's the degree of oppression that was going, that even yeah. that spirit was tamed by, by, by the law and the, the morals of the, of the time. Yeah. I've, I've, you, see if you can answer this question, because it puzzles me, and uh, uh, it's, it's one I, a question I ask tentatively, because I don't wish to appear rude in your country, but you, you, have, you have here uh, gay soldiers. There's, uh, there's the commander, Camomai, is it she's called, the wonderful Amazon who, lesbian who's just announced that she's lesbian and is now having to leave the army. Yeah. Because of it. You was also a mother of two and four, uh, I think, oh, yes. four maybe. Yeah. Is, it, is it four by now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. She, yeah, she, the, the, uh, there, are, there are gay and lesbian people openly throughout American society, uh, with the exception of uh, show business. And uh, 
In England, it's the reverse. Uh, in England, we don't have any gay judges or gay head teachers or gay firemen or gay mm. politicians, but we do have a group of uh, gay, not lesbian, but gay actors who are uh, out, and um, the yeah. theatre world, I think, is enriched by that honesty. But in this country, not at all. Now, why should that be? Are you be? saying one doesn't come out in the other professions in England openly? No, there are very very few people out in public life in England, whereas yeah. uh, here there, there are a lot more. But See, not not in Hollywood and, and not in not on Broadway. Now, why should that be? I, I don't know that I do understand that. And, and, um, there, there's still a lot of stigma, despite the supposedly liberalized atmosphere, mm. I guess. Um, what could be more hypocritical than the armed forces? The greatest Valhalla of homosexuality, the site of the ministry or the uh, convent or the... Uh, you know, the priesthood, and, and yet they claim that none of those men are anything but men. Yes, the, the everybody are, has, I know, has been um, cruised by a drill sergeant at some point in his life. How oh, lovely! And well, people love to tell about it. You know? yes, I even know a tough drill sergeant who would have been played by William Bendix, and she won't mind my mentioning this, but she's now a woman and lives happily in Texas on a ranch. Had a whole sex change. Really? Yeah, it's but funny. Uh, no, I. I think it's just the idea that uh, our poor recruits are the sons of America might in the middle of the night be approached by uh, another recruit slightly what? older who, who is gay. And might get up to something in the night. My God, if the Marines can't <laughs> cope with that, what chance on the battlefield? Yeah. It's a comic situation really and Ross Perot should know better. He'll eventually have to climb down on that I'm sure. I, I think he goofed there. That's as close as he's come to making major goof. Yeah. Perot about, about uh, homosexuals in yeah. the uh, cabinet and, and the cab cabinet homosexuals mm -hmm. as opposed to closet <laughs> homosexuals. Yeah. Uh, what is it finally, though, about human nature? We have to find something to be superior to somebody else about, and we reach in every direction to do it, it seems. There are, because there we're are all frightened children, you know, wanting, to, wanting to belong and, and wanting to, um, if we can only point a finger at somebody else and say they're different, then it makes us feel a little bit more secure. It, it's right. pathetic, really. And that's, that's why, um, that's, that's the importance of coming out to the individual. To, once you're honest, you're standing on your own two feet, and then you don't feel the need to point. I feel much less need to... There's a, there, I can see a selfish reason for coming out then, because mm. in fact, if, not only is it probably a great burden taken off of you, of not mm. having to say, let's see, now does that one know and that That's one doesn't right. know, when I'm talking to both of them, what do I do? I can imagine that. Yeah. that, that but to me, to Jonathan Miller once said the reason, I asked him why all their spies are homosexuals in England, and, and uh, he said he hadn't thought of it, but being Miller, he instantly came up with a very good answer, which was that uh, they were highly intelligent, that they were homosexual, that they were attracted to an acting life, and they needed to use their intellect, those from Cambridge and so on. And so this was the perfect thing for them to be, really, just mm. by hiding. Um, I mean, yes, but all spies are drunks as well. I don't know if there's any... No, writers are drunks. Are they? Oh, spies are too, yeah. And talk show hosts... No, no, you're ta not talking No, no, they're... No. According to a lady who complimented Jay Leno the other night, all talk show hosts, with the exception of him, and she just happened to be there, are, let me get it right, racists, uh, homophobes, sexists, and think with their penis. Well, I don't know what this does to... Good thing Dinah Shore doesn't have a I talk think, show now. I think really it be just sure. means that she hasn't been watching your show recently. <laughs> <laughs> Are you implying that she has a lot of company? No, she just finds it <laughs> difficult to find on the dial. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm none of those things, am I? I love the idea. I can imagine Peter Cook and Dudley Moore doing the subject of the, that whatever Section 28 it is and other... I'm they, sorry. They, what, I, they don't, unfortunately, do much uh, political material, but uh, they're, yeah. they're good on social stuff. But no, they'd, they'd keep off that now. They're two good liberal boys, I think. You're glad you did it. Yeah, so I'm thrilled to bits. It's changed my life uh, so totally, actually. Could it, in 15 seconds left, enrich you any as an actor? Is it irrelevant? Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's associated with, with, with uh, the middle of my life in which I've loosened up and stirred a lot of things inside me. Uh, and, um, Damn, which, I have to let you leave brought my emotions up to the surface and they're bubbling through in, in, on stage, I think. Great. Mm. You're Richard III. It will come to various cities and I cannot wait to see it. Thanks for being here. Thank <laughs> you.